fire during Sunday services. The FBI now on the scene of Texas's deadliest mass shooting ever. Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Fujii in for Elsa Ramon. And I'm Peter Dowd. At least 26 people are dead, including the gunman, after a mass shooting in Sutherland Springs, about 40 minutes outside of San Antonio. Between 40 and 50 people were attending Sunday services at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs this morning. At about 11.15, witnesses say a single man with a gun walked in and opened fire on the congregation. At least at this moment in time, there are 26 lives that have been lost. As many as four dozen people are said to have been wounded, the gunman reportedly fled the scene in a vehicle. Police are said to have pursued him north into Guadalupe County. That's where the gunman was killed. It's unclear if he was shot or if he took his own life. The incident prompted a massive response from local, state, and even federal law enforcement agencies. The FBI and the Department of Homeland Security have already joined the investigation. Sutherland Springs is about 35 miles east of San Antonio. Today, one person described it as the kind of place where everybody knows everybody, including the people who were killed today. Hello, my name is Tish Emerson, and I'm with Mr. Bill Ashley from the Cumberland County Police Department. Sheriff's Department. Sheriff's Department. Okay. okay. All right, how long have you been with the uh, Sheriff's Department? I've been, I've been a law enforcement officer for 35 years. I've been at the Sheriff's Office for seven. Okay, and what brought y'all here tonight? Well, about a year ago, our Sheriff, Casey Cox, allowed us to go to some training. But we realized that there was something missing in the, in the community to give back to the people what to do if there was an active shooter situation. From law enforcement, enforcement point of view, we knew what to do, but what does the people do? What do the citizens do? And, and so we, we're teaching a class called ALICE, and it's for civilian response to active shooters. Okay, and what is ALICE? ALICE is, is, is a course of steps. It's alert. It's one of a lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. Different things you can do if you were to be in a situation with an active shooter. What should someone do if they're in a hostage situation? Hostage situations are very unique. Um, the best thing to do in a hostage situation is allow the, the negotiators to negotiate with the whoever took the person hostage, the bad guy, as it would be. Um, it's, it's very difficult in a hostage situation. Fortunately, they're, very, they're not very common whatsoever. Um, but it's very difficult to negotiate with a, a, a hostage taker if, if, the, uh, if the victim is, is trying to do anything. So it's, it's, it's probably a better case scenario if, that, if the victim was to allow the negotiator and the police, police officers to negotiate with the bad man. Uh, someone is charging at you with a gun. Have you ever been in a situation? I have. I have. I've been fortunate enough. I've been in four situations where I would have been justified to use deadly force. And in less time that it took me to answer that question, that situation changed and I didn't have to. And I'm forever grateful I didn't have to do that. So, so for everybody out there watching, what is the best advice you could give them about uh, approaching, you know, gathering up a security team for their church? First of all, heavily vet the people that you want to be on, that want to be on the team. Just because they have a permit doesn't qualify them necessarily to be on a security team. You want to be very cautious of how you pick on that team because if you may hurt somebody's feelings, which is fine, but if they would get you in a lawsuit or in a situation where the shooting was unjustified, then you have a big problem. Contact your insurance company. Let them give you some guidance on that as to what your insurance company at your church will and will not accept as a security team too. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. All right. Later. Time to get started. Uh, Thank you for coming out to Salem Baptist Church tonight. I'm Josh Brown, the pastor here at Salem, and uh, uh, we are uh, thankful to be able to host this training. We're thankful for the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office uh, to send their guys down here and, and put this training on for us. And, and uh, my deacons, a couple of my deacons and myself, went up a couple of weeks ago and, and watched this training as they put it on uh, for a church there in Crossville. And uh, it was top notch, and, and I, I was so thankful uh, that Bo agreed to come down and help us. And, and uh, you know, this this training isn't going to give you a step by step 
set of rules or regulations on what you need to take back to your church to implement to make things secure. Uh, but what it is going to do, what it did for us, was certainly open up our eyes to the need of uh, security within churches, being mindful uh, of what's going on out there today. Because we know that the churches are under attack. Amen? Amen. Uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against them. We know that. Uh, but the enemies at work against us today, and it, it, it made me think of a verse in Scripture, 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 7. The Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now he's talking to the church. Paul's, Paul's actually talking to Timothy, but he's talking to Christians here. Okay, uh, Christians are the ones who uh, have a don't have a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and, and of, a, of a sound mind. And, and so uh, we do this training not because we're scared, you know, not because we're scared. As Christians, we know where our eternity lies, amen, amen. where our future lies, because of what Jesus did for us. So we're not scared, um, but we, you know, God's given us brains to use, amen. common sense to take care of our people. Pastors, we're to, as the shepherds of the flock, we're to protect our flocks. Amen? So that's what we're doing tonight. Just hopefully you can get some nuggets from this to go back, maybe ideas to go back and, and implement. So we're thankful that they're here. Just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, number one, silence your cell phones for us. Okay? Silence your cell phones for us. Go ahead and do that. I just did mine in the back. Number two, we do have restrooms uh, through either of these doors in the back. We have restrooms in the back, or you can go out of the back, uh, the front door that you came in. Our ushers can help you get downstairs to the restrooms downstairs. And uh, after, after we get done, we have some finger foods and stuff down in the fellowship hall. So we would welcome you to come and join us for that. Okay? All right, well, I want to introduce... Uh, Chief Bill Ashley from the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department and, and uh, investigator, are you detective or investigator? Investigator. Bo Carvis. Now, Bo, I, I, I was in law enforcement almost 15 years prior to surrendering to full-time ministry, and I started at the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office, and, and uh, my first shift, my first assignment uh, was with Bo. He was uh, my training officer, so we go back. He's a great Christian man. I've heard great things uh, about Chief Ashley here, he's a big dude, ain't he? <laughs> he's a big dude. And uh, so I'm thankful that these guys are here. Sheriff Casey Cox from Cumberland County, gracious enough to let them uh, come down. So you guys welcome them, and uh, let's see what we can learn tonight, okay? Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I, I really do appreciate this great turnout. Um, about a year ago, Sheriff Cox allowed us to go to some training, and we, we wanted to fill in the gap. And this is basically standing in the gap, because we know what we're going to do as law enforcement officers when we respond to an active shooter. But we want to treat, teach you guys something, and hope that you carry this away from you, that you can utilize, not just in church, but in school, in the store, restaurants, anything else, to be more aware. Just take that awareness away when you go. Um, of, 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 of what the world is like today. I was asked by a high school teacher the other day, right right after the Antioch shooting, she said, what is the, what's causing this? I said, this is just evil. This is the world we live in. And when I look at this place packed, this church packed, there's churches all around this world that have to meet in secret, hiding to worship, and you guys are here free to do right. that. So we want to give you the opportunity to, to learn some of this information. Um, we'll have a question and answer session at the end. If you watch how this program goes, it's a civilian response. Like I said, I know what I'm going to do. Bo knows what he's going to do. Your sheriff certainly knows what he's going to do when he responds. It's what you guys can do in the meantime. So, we will, like I said, at the end, we'll have a question and answer period. If you watch this, I think you'll have a lot of your questions get answered. i will turn it over to Bo now. Good evening. Good evening. Again, my name is Bo Culver, so I'm an investigator with the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department. Been in law enforcement almost 20 years. Like Pastor Josh says, uh, he and I kind of came up together a little bit. And uh, back in the day when Pastor Josh would lay hands on somebody, it meant a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> he 
you guys have got a good man right there. I'm really proud of him and his family. Of course, Candace is the best part. But, you know. So, to kind of reiterate what Bill said, this is a civilian response to an active shooter, not law enforcement response, not a military or somebody that has training. This is what you, your family, your friends, what you guys can do. So before we get started, we're going to go over a few rules. No guns. Now, before you guys get mad and try to run me out of here, when I say no guns, what I'm really saying is keep it holstered. We're going to do some scenarios that may get a little intense for some people, but it's just a scenario. There are no reason to unholster your weapon. If you do that, we probably will shoot you. So, <laughs> don't do it. Now, what I can tell you is there is no scenario where somebody's going to come in the back of the church with a gun out. Okay? That, if that happens, Sheriff, you got my back. <laughs> so, silence your cell phones. If you need to answer a call, step out. You're not going to bother me one bit. Restrooms, Josh let you guys know where those are at. If you don't want to participate in one of the scenarios that we do, then you don't have to. I will make fun of you, but you don't have to do it. 